Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday. Welcome to our, the presence of God wherever you are, whether you're at home or whether you're in your study. We welcome you. We just want to gather our hearts together in one accord, and let's just lift up a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another wonderful day, Lord, that you've granted to us. Thank you, Lord, that your love for us is so strong, it's so big, it's so deep, Lord. It's beyond our comprehension. Thank you that you are always with us, Lord. We know that right now, Lord, where we are today, Lord, we're here because of who you are. We're here only by your grace, Lord. And we thank you. We just want to acknowledge that, God. So allow us in one accord, Lord. We just want to lift up our hearts to you, God. Thank you, Jesus.
Father, that we live today, God, we know that your grace is always sufficient for us. We know, God, we cannot be here without your faithfulness, without your love, without your leading, God. We just want to praise you in this place, Father. No matter where we are, Lord, with one heart, we just want to sing to you. Because you're an amazing God.
endures forever. Amen. I know that you know this song. I know that I use it quite a, a lot, actually, the majority of you. So come and join me singing this song together with us. Thank you, Lord, for you are so good. Thank you, I know. prepare our heart, God. Once again, Lord, all that we want to do, Lord, is to stand in your presence, Lord, declaring your goodness over us, God. We know who we are in you, Lord, God. We know that we stand in your presence. We bask in your love. And as we do that, Lord, we know, Lord, that we are blessed people. We are called people. That's what we are made.
that we may ever see you, Lord. You're greater than any sickness that we may come in our lives, God. You're greater than any problems, Lord, that may come and stand in front of us, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you are a mighty God, that you will come through, Lord, in our lives. And we praise you, and we bless your name, God, in the Lord, for everything that you have done, Lord, even everything that you are going to do, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. You are holy, God. Right now, Lord, we're just going to prepare our hearts and our ears, Lord, to hear the word of God, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will speak, Lord, through Pastor Honey, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're ready, Lord, to hear your word. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. I would like to share about you a specific to topic. Talk about sacrifice of praise. It's quite interesting because you need to open your hearts. You need to listen, you know, God's message today because it will help you. During this season, COVID-19 season, it will help you. Because this is the one that you need to uh, offer to God as a living sacrifice. You know, taken from Hebrew chapter 13, uh, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. You know, so uh, let's talk about what is sacrifice anyway. You know, sacrifice is a divine institution. Divine institution originate with God. God himself appointed it as the mode in which acceptable worship was to be offered to him by guilty men. And this is a, these are two kinds of sacrifice. Number one is unbloody. Unbloody sacrifice means first fruit and tithes, meat and drinking offering, and incense offering. Number two is bloody sacrifice. It's talk about burnt offering, talk about peace offering, and talk about uh, sin and trespass offering. So there is an unbloody, and the second one is bloody sacrifice. So right now, as the New Testament people, we are now in Christ. The scriptures say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ is a perfect sacrifice for all of us. In the book of Hebrews, so many scriptures that explain that Christ is a perfect sacrifice. Let me take from one scripture only, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 12. This is from the Passion's translation. It says, By God's will, we have been purified and made holy ones. And for all through the sacrifice of the body of Christ, the body of Jesus, the Messiah. So we are pleasing in God's eyes, not because we are good or we are doing God's law, not that kind of reason, but because we accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Yes, when we accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, since then, the favor of God is upon us. That is a good news. Compared to sacrifices in the Old Testament, like the, the, the first book actually, you know, from, the, uh, from, from your Bible, is the book of Job. Job is the earliest book that Moses wrote about. So Job did it. Talk about sacrifice in the Old Testament. Job did sacrifice to God in daily basis for his family. And as you know, every religion do the same as the Old Testament people did to obtain the favor of God and let the God or gods did not get angry due to our sinful uh, nature and deeds, even thoughts. Let me introduce one covenant, one sacrifice that is in your Bible, specifically in the Old Testament. We learn about the salt covenant. Salt covenant. 
Usually when people, you know, people offer, you know, bloody sacrifice, they put some salt upon it. This is quite interesting because salt covenant, you know, the covenant of salt is the covenant of love. The covenant of love is the covenant of sacrifice because there cannot be love without sacrifice. Salt is used for three reasons. Number one, salt is used for preservation. Number two is for fertilizers. And number three is for seasoning or flavoring. You know, let, let's, let's talk about, about preservation first. Number one, you know, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, it says, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus said, for all of us, his disciples, right now, you know, you are the salt of, in, uh, of, of the earth. So, number one, salt preserve and heals cut wounds. And also salt, you know, preserve rottenness. You are supposed to heal, preserve others, and prevent their rottenness with the system of this world. You and me supposed to heal, preserve others, and prevent their rottenness with the system of the world. That's number one, preservation. Talk number two, fertilizers. You are the salt of the earth. Matthew 5, verse 13. You know, fertilizer causes plants to grow. You are the agent of growth in the earth. If you are to live right and ensure you do the very best to influence others, to also live right, to society, you know, to society flourish. We are such important things for this earth. We can influence others to live righteous like we do. Number three, talk about salt. Salt is seasoning or flavoring. You are the salt of the earth. You give reason effect to the people in positive ways and let them, you know, let them to, you know, to live holy and to have savor of Jesus. Let them smell of Jesus. Let them taste of Jesus. You are to sacrifice to save others through agape love. That is the covenant salt or covenant of sacrifice. So the next one, number one, I have a question like this. Do we need sacrifice on these days, modern days? Please ask married people. Do they, you know, do they need to still sacrifice to their spouse, even already years been married? I believe every wife, every husband will say 100% true. It is a must. In Luke chapter 5, verse 14, you know, this is talk about how the leprosy man, you know, been healed by the touch of Jesus. Do you know the instruction of Jesus that been given to this man, you know, ex leprosy, you know, it's like this. You go, show, your, you show yourself to the priest and don't forget to still give your sacrifice. This is means that Jesus is never put obsolete a law, you know, a law of Moses, nor the law of our human heart. You know that the, the way that we we giving thanks to someone that really doing doing good to us is we give something. So if you ask me, do we need to sacrifice on these days? I can tell you 
100% we should sacrifice until these days. Number two, what is our perfect sacrifice compared to the Old Testament uh, person or people? You know, they, they brought their, their animals, they brought cattle, you know, they cut it and really, you know, they, they, they cut it and they sacrifice, they pour out their, their, their blood, you know. And they gave to the priests to perform burn offering. You know, right now we don't need to bring perfect animals, nor anything like in the Old Testament. But we must open our hearts to let Jesus, our Messiah, to be our perfect sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God that blessed and gives, gives His Father's favor upon us. So when you have Jesus inside your heart, I believe one thing that you really uh, must know that the favor of God is upon you. Number three is what are living sacrifices? In the, in the New Testament, you know, there are several, there is five things that I would like to give you this morning. Number one is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is talk about let us offer our body as a living sacrifice. Offering your body to live holy. That's number one. Number two is Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. Talk about our faith. Faith offering. You can check in, 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 in the title, you know, about, about the scripture, Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. Number three is Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Talk about how Paul appreciated from the Philippians church that gave him love offering as money that can support his life and his ministry. Number four is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Talk about, you know, like a priesthood offering. Priesthood offering, talk about your ministry. And number five, this is quite interesting, is Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15, talk about sacrifice of praise. You know, I would like to bring you to the story of Job. In the book of Job, chapter 1, you know, Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. I would like to read this scripture. It says like this. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. You must know he's the one of the conglomerate at that time. And you know what? The scripture says, you know, first of all, his sons used to take turns holding feasts in their homes. And they will invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would send and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering to each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Look at this. Job offered his burnt offering, you know, in daily basis for his children. And you know what? As the result, God put hedges around his family. Talk about hedges of protection. Talk about hedges of blessing. And that cause, you know, the Bible say he is the greatest man. He is the richest man in the Middle East at that time. But if you continue the story... From Job chapter 1, you know exactly there is a drama 
when the devil, Satan himself, talk and request, you know, that that hedges that God put around Job family been lift up. So, better you read the story because the story continue like this. He was losses, you know. He was lost everything in one night. His children were died, and his wife was left him. Was leaving him, and his companies were collapsed. His money dry up, and he got this illness that cannot be cured. Actually, what did Satan target in Job? You know, quite interesting. You need to know, you know, one of the sacrifice of five that I already gave to you is sacrifice of praise. You know, from five, there is four. You can do it without any money. If you, you say that you are broke because of this COVID-19, you know, you lost your job, you lost your, your, your mortgage, you lost everything, but you still can do four different kinds of sacrifice. Yes, you know, the love offering or the love sacrifice is talk about money that support Apostle Paul. But four of them is totally you can do it. Without anything in your pocket, you can do it. And one of things, you know, that talk about the story of Job, you know, with everything that Job lost and he was broke almost, got terminated in his life. He cannot give. He cannot, uh, you know, perform his sacrifice to the Almighty God anymore. So it means like this, Satan targeted his sacrifice. Satan targeted Job's offerings. Why is it so important about sacrifice? In Exodus chapter 10, verse 24, 26, you can read it. Pharaoh talked about the contest between Moses and Pharaoh, between Israelite and the Egyptian. You know, Pharaoh let the Israelites worship their God. But his request, Pharaoh's request is, just let the cattle stay in Egypt. So it means, Pharaoh, never mind about the people of God that can worship. But that kind of worship is bloodless. Bloodless sacrifice. And if you, you, you are the student of the Bible, you know exactly that bloodless sacrifice is useless sacrifice because God requires you know, something that has blood. This is quite important because when the, the, the story of Job continues, you will find in Job chapter 42, this is almost over, you know, the story of Job almost over. Job chapter 42, verse 8, talk about Job's friends. Talk about Eliphaz, talk about Bildad, and talk about Sofa. Job's friends must bring, you know, in the scripture, Job's friends must bring sacrifice for them and for Job to pray. So Job could pray for them, for their mistaken words, that God did not like it. And and when Job pray for their offerings, the Lord will accept Job's prayer and forgive all the three friends. If the story continue, verse 10, it say like this, after Job had prayer for his friend, the Lord make him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. This is quite interesting. When Job, you know, when Job has opportunity to give sacrifice again, do you know what's happening? The Lord accepted that sacrifice and he returned, you know, he, he just made Job prosperous again and give twice as much as he had before. 
So, brother, sister, this is very important. Talk about sacrifice is very important. Please, I don't know your condition. I don't know your situation. Perhaps this COVID-19 season really took everything that you had. The world system say you are broke. But let me tell you what. Don't let Satan stop your praise and your sacrifice. In Hebrew 13, you say sacrifice or praise. You know, I would like to give to you the three things that I believe this is pleasing God. Number one is Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8. It's talk about God rejected the sinner's prayer, but he listened to the righteous one. So you can pray, number one. Number two is Psalm 51, verse 17. Talk about, you know, such a contrite heart, humble heart. So number one, you can do pray. Number two, please, have a humble heart, humility. That's Psalm 51, verse 17. Number three is Hosea, the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6. It's talk about like this. You are merciful. If you are full of mercy of God, you know what? You can become faithful and close to God. This is the one that really you need to do it. You can pray. You can pray. You can, you can have a humble heart. And number three, be merciful, faithful, and close to God. So what next, Pastor Honey? You and I looking forward for a new normal. You know, the COVID-19 season already changed all of us. But for all of us, for us that believers, something good awaiting for us. I believe these coming seasons and years will be the greatest, you know, ever years. Just like God restored Job twice as much. That's why I just want to encourage you before I pray for you. Please, church, brother, sister, die hard. And stay strong, everyone. Stay strong. You know, keep unity in your heart and with your, your, your family. Because God is with you. And if God is with you, you know what? That is, that is a nice song. Talk about Christ is enough for you. Yes, Christ is enough for you. Because Christ is the hope of glory. That is my message for this Sunday. And I believe you will be blessed if you're doing whatever that the Lord has said to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Dear God, we thank you for your presence, for your presence, you know, in going while, while we went through, Lord, all, you know, all the COVID-19 season. I know, Lord Jesus, that your hands always be upon your people. Father, sometimes we don't know, we don't understand all of your will. But now we surrender ourselves into your good hands. And we give our sacrifice of praise because you are good, Father. Truly, you are good, Father. Lord, I renew. Say it together with me. Lord, I renew with you for this year, 2020. You know, I renew my covenant with you. Help me, Lord, to be, to be your salt in, in the world. Preserving righteousness, peace, and love. Giving godly flavor wherever I am and causing a godly thirst to those in need a Savior. Lord, a season, you know, season my tongue with salt to be ever ready to testify about you, you know, that you are our Savior. I made this covenant today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you.
Shalom warga kerajaan, kami masih berada dalam satu tema yang sangat baik sekali yaitu tentang strategi. Orang yang tidak merencanakan dan tidak punya strategi akan mengalami kehancuran. Tuhan sendiri berkata harus ada planning. Jadi para siapa tidak berperang melawan raja yang lain menghitung tentaranya. Apa dengan 10.000 ribu tentara bisa melawan yang 20.000 ribu kalau tidak coba adakan perdamaian. Tetapi sama sampaikan the power of the right succession. Suksesi yang tepat. Di dalam Yosua pasal pertama, kitab Yosua ini menarik sekali harus dibaca yaitu oleh semua yang masuk akademi militer West Point di Amerika. Karena banyak orang belajar yaitu tentang uh, siasat perang dari Sun Tzu, yang dari China ataupun yang lain yang lain. Ketika seorang profesor yang mengajarkan tentang strategi juga di West Point dia tanya siapa jenderal paling hebat mereka bilang Napoleon ada yang bilang Genghis Khan ada yang bilang Alexander the Great tidak katanya Joshua Joshua di dalam firman Tuhan dikatakan adalah uh, asisten daripada Musa syarat Mose bukan ebet tapi syarat anda saat ini jadi asisten seseorang hebat. Cari orang hebat di mana Anda bisa belajar. Kemudian Musa menumpangkan tangan di atasnya. Di dalam kitab ulangan pasal 34 mulai ayat 9 sampai 12. Bagaimana setelah tumpangi tangan penuh dengan roh hikmat. Saudara yang kasih Tuhan setiap pemimpin. Bahkan setiap pemimpin perusahaan kepala keluarga. Harus mempersiapkan penggantinya. Kalau satu tidak bisa ya tim lah. Tidak ada zaman superstar. Sekarang super tim. The power of the right succession. Karena Yosua yang milih itu bukan Musa tapi Tuhan. Dari begitu banyak orang hebat. Yosua namanya dulu Hosea. Hosea artinya salvation, keselamatan. Diganti namanya jadi Joshua. Joshua ada Jehovah deliver. Jehovah savior. Itu gambaran orang yang dilahirkan kembali. Nama saya dulu Arifin sekarang Timotius. Sebab saya dilahirkan kembali. Yaitu 40 tahun yang lalu. Saudara yang kasih am Tuhan. Firman Allah menjelaskan bagaimana Tuhan berjanji kepada Yosua. Sebagaimana aku menyertai Musa. Tidak ada hamba Tuhan lebih hebat dari Musa dalam perjanjian lama. Yang berhadapan-hadapan dengan Tuhan. Yang melakukan banyak yaitu mujizat dan teror kepada musuh-musuhnya. Saudara yang kasih am Tuhan. Yosua dari Uh, syarat Mose menjadi Ebed Yahweh di dalam Yosua pasal 24 itu karir saudara saya. Anda hari ini menjadi seorang pegawai sederhana, nggak apa-apa. Yang kedua saya mau bicara tentang the power of vision. Tuhan berkata dari gambarkan the greater Israel janji Tuhan bukan seperti Israel yang sekarang, tetapi dari Sungai Nil sampai Sungai Efrat, Sungai Nil di Mesir. Lalu padang gurun sin, padang gurun dan terus sampai sungai Efrat. Efrat itu perat artinya berbuah, kehidupan yang berbuah. The power of vision. Jangan punya mimpi yang kecil saudara. Kita ini punya Tuhan yang besar. Saya bermimpi dalam hidup saya membangun para pemimpin yang akan menggantikan kami-kami yang senior ini. Generasi Musa, kita semangitkan generasi Yosua. The power of vision Kita percaya yaitu the power of vision Bukan khayal Sebab ini Tuhan yang berjanji Sampai ke sungai Efrat Sampai hidup yang penuh dengan buah Terimalah kekuatan ini The power of vision and the power of the right succession God bless you warga kerajaan Amen Let's stand together and prepare your bread And also wine you know In your room, in your hand I believe 
this occasion will bless you. This Holy Communion will bless you. All right? I would like to pray that we pray, that we eat and drink, you know, the bread and wine in remembrance of Christ's passion and death may be partaker of His body and His blood. The scriptures say, for the night of His betrayal, He took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples. Take and eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Church, right now, let's take and eat the bread in unity and honor. Let our eyes be open to the manifestation of God's work in Jesus' mighty name. Let's eat it. After supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this cup, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sin, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Church, I believe God will give you nutrition, you know, in your, in your immunity so you will have a new life. Thank you. Drink it in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray that everyone that participate in this Holy Communion will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's stretch out your hands toward heavens. I know you already blessed with the words of God, but I want you to, to really have a, this great Sunday with double blessing. Stress out your hands toward heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you, church. He makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance to you and give you peace from now forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great Sunday.